What a month! In September 2020, I was able to earn over $10,000 from 1.4 million views and 74,000 subscribers. Let's break down exactly how I was able to get here. I'm going to provide the backstory first, give you the breakdown of how to grow as a creator on YouTube, and then I'll show you all of the analytics after. Two and a half years ago, I was struggling to find traction as a creator and didn't really have a plan for growth. I thought I wasn't good enough for YouTube and didn't think I had what it took to grow a following. At the time, I couldn't bridge the gap between being a really small creator and a creator who has enough of a following to earn money. My release schedule was maybe a couple videos a month if I had some ideas that I wanted to make a video on and share with the public, but I was mostly just trying to figure out the game of YouTube. On September 23rd, 2018, I released a video detailing some key lessons I learned from my first accepted real estate investment property. I then took a seven month break from YouTube and around that time, I didn't know how to grow. I felt like I was a failure and I wasn't good enough to make it as a YouTuber. I definitely was not going to quit though because deep down I knew that I had what it took to be a creator with a large following. I trusted myself enough to know that I had the capabilities of figuring out the game at some point. A few months later and a few more poorly performing videos were released, but I started to formulate some ideas. I realized that I enjoyed analyzing concepts from a different angle. It's the natural contrarian in me. And I had a few ideas on how to expose some topics or people I didn't like in the real estate world. I released Fortune Builders, A Seminar for Suckers, and Flip or Flop, What the Flipping Houses Show Keeps Hidden From You. Unfortunately, I received a cease and desist for the Fortune Builders video, but this was when my strategy was born. It was at this moment when my video on buying a fourplex in Las Vegas started to take off randomly. I had released the video on July 7th, but it started randomly taking off in October. If you're a small creator watching this, I hope you get to experience this feeling at least once in your life. Seeing a video reach 100,000 views in a 60 day stretch was all I needed to fully convince myself that I was good enough to make it as a creator. After making over 100 videos, I can't deny that I was very doubtful of my capabilities and felt like quitting many, many times. Just a few weeks later, I made videos titled Flip or Flop Exposed and The One Thing Gary Vaynerchuk Has Wrong. But most importantly, I happened to stumble on a video by a creator named CoffeeZilla for a series called Fake Guru Fridays. It was about Dan Locke. I watched the entire video and loved it and then I watched a few of his Fake Guru Friday videos. It was the perfect video series at the perfect time for me. I wanted to make exposed type videos and he gave me the urge to look into these social media gurus. My goal was to create a series where I really researched the background of popular social media celebrities to see who they really were. I wanted to be completely objective and come up with a way to determine if these gurus were as successful as they claim or if they were all charlatans. Around this time, I found myself watching One Bite Pizza Reviews by Dave Portnoy every day and loved how there was a score to every episode. And so I wanted to create a series where I could analyze gurus and decide if they were really a guru or if they were a charlatan and I wanted to give them a score. The first episode of the series was released December 2nd, 2019, and the second a week later. The feedback and metrics showed that I was onto something which directed me to keep making episodes. Ever since, my channel has seen exponential growth. Here's an analytical breakdown of exactly how I reached this point. Step one, I focused on a very specific niche and strategy. Make video essays or breakdowns on popular internet marketers. For this specific niche, I made quality videos. What is quality varies drastically from niche to niche. A couple of my highest viewed videos have terrible audio and video, but the content itself and the script I wrote is what had people enjoying the video. Step two, every couple of weeks I would try a different video concept just to see how people would respond. I made a video about investing Zion Williamson's money and Joe Burrow's money. I made a video detailing the art of the comeback featuring some famous athletes. They all bombed. Step three, I used that same strategy to then broaden my specific niche. What was once a very specific content type of making videos about specific gurus became ad reviews and debate breakdowns which performed well and received good feedback. Step four, once I had a large enough following, I was able to begin making videos with the potential of blowing up. These are kind of viral type videos. All of these videos performed well, a video about Eminem and marketing and sales, Domino's Pizza, online dating scams, why your favorite musicians and athletes are broke, Mr. Beast, and then the Kanye West record contract breakdown. I started with a very small specific niche and then I continued to broaden the scope as I grew a following. I think that's the most probable way to grow as a creator on YouTube. If you're new to the channel 
Every month I break down all of the YouTube analytics and my personal income and expenses as if I were a public company. Let's get into it. Can't explain how happy I am to see these numbers. 1.4 million views, gained 17 and a half thousand subscribers and made over 10 grand. I honestly can't thank everyone enough. YouTube does this cool thing where you have top videos in this period. I had, uh, these videos clearly took off. People seem to really like these videos. Um, they're released in July. So this is uh, kind of on the downwind of these videos because they had already received their, their big surge at the beginning, but they're still getting a lot of views. And what I found interesting, if, if you're a small creator, this is the reason why you need to just keep going. I made this video, Why NFL Athletes Go Broke, Dwayne Haskins. I made this in March. The video bombed. I thought it was when I released it and it didn't do well. I was like, okay, I'm never doing a video like this again. But what I found interesting is because I made these three videos about athletes and musicians going broke, I think it got caught up in the algorithm. And look at that 77,000 views just in this one month. It's at 90,000 views, so about 14,000 before this. Um, but even before like the last two months with these other videos, it was like a thousand views. And so this is just a, a reminder to all you out there that if you just stick with it, sometimes maybe a new video can take off and it'll bring up all your old videos. You can see a lot of these new videos that I've been making that are getting a lot more views. We'll go over those in a second. Uh, but anyway, back to the analytics. Let's go to reach. 17.7 .7 million impressions. Almost 18 million times my videos were put in someone's face. That is crazy. 4.2% click-through rate. I've heard that the average is three to 5%, so that sounds right about where, uh, where the norm would be. When you start seeing the impressions go up, that click-through rate really matters. I mean, 4%, 5%. If you're getting that many clicks on that many impressions, you're naturally gonna get a lot of views. Welcome all the 573,000 people who are unique, new or unique to the channel. I think down here you can see where all the traffic comes from. I found it really interesting when uh, on YouTube search, certain people search for my actual name, 7%. It's kind of interesting. All right, let's check out engagement. 150,000 watch hours, people watching my videos, that blows my mind. Still, I can't, still can't wrap my head around actually getting that many views. All right, 17,000 subscribers. To give you guys an idea if you're new to the channel, um, I'll show you for the last 365 days. You can see the spike. Like it was nothing for a while. I was getting like, I was happy getting 20 to 40 a day. And then sometime this month I had a couple days at over a thousand. I had three straight days of over a thousand subs in a single day. I mean, imagine if you could do that for a month. Think of how many subscribers you gain at that pace. It's pretty wild. All right, back to September. Let's check out the revenue tab. Oh, I do think actually before we do that, I think some of you enjoy seeing these other stuff. So uh, the subscribers watching the videos is up. That was down to like 14% recently. So seeing it up to 18% is nice. And it's also cool to see other videos your audience watch just to see where some of the traffic was coming from. It's cool to see people watching other, other videos and then checking out yours. Over 50% from United States. I've got a lot of countries represented though. Welcome, welcome to the channel. Those of you outside of the United States and it's pretty clear when my audience is online, so that's when I, I try to plan my releases, is right there at the beginning of, the, of when my audience really jumps online. That way, hopefully, you get the view velocity up, which is how many views you're getting right away. Time for the revenue tab. All right, over 10,000 bucks, $17 CPM, which is down 15%, but that's just natural. I'm not too mad at that. It used to be like in the 25 to 30 range before this health event, but that was also because I was making really specific content for really high-end, uh, tags and video titles, that is the make money online, real estate investing, that stuff. I've gone more broad, which is gonna lead to less CPM, but the benefit is you get more subscribers and a lot more views, or at least the potential for your videos to kind of go viral, which I think is a better play long-term, which is why I'm kind of taking the short-term profit today to grow the channel and in turn, hopefully over the long haul with all the new subscribers and these larger videos that I've been making, it brings in more money and views and subscribers down the road. And for you, those of you new to the channel, you can see the growth. Last 365 days, I mean, it's just absolutely exponential. The last couple of days have been a, a huge drop, but I mean, there, there's been days, there was a, what, a couple weeks, maybe two or three weeks of 400, 380, 400, there was a $510 day. I made $500 on Monday, September 14th, $510 in a single day. That's a $15,000 month. Absolutely blows my mind. It would be really dope to, uh, to do that consistently. If I can get to a point of making $500 a day on average, 
Man, that would be that surely would be great. I think some of you do ask about the RPM, seven dollars and fifty five cents. That's how much I actually make per a thousand views. And for those of you who do ask, because I get it all the time, that this is the money that does go into my account. The ten thousand three sixty nine. This is after YouTube's cut, so I do see that amount come to my bank account. Sometimes YouTube will actually drop it a little bit. I, there must be some final tallying going on, but sometimes it's it's a hundred or two hundred dollars less that actually reaches your bank account. But the numbers are, are pretty staggering. I mean, I've made so much money this year just off YouTube. I, I honestly can't be appreciative of enough of making six to ten thousand dollars a month just from ad revenue. I haven't figured out ways to monetize outside of ad revenue. I'm just going to keep doing ad revenue. I'm I'm thankful for the amount. I'm happy with it. Here are the top earning videos. Quite a bit of money when you make a video and uh, month after month it's bringing five hundred, eight hundred dollars. I'm in real estate. Some of the real estate investors out there expect about $100 a month per door. And so to get a house in cash flow 200 or maybe $100 a month, you would need eight houses to cash flow what I make from a single video that took me a couple days to make. It's, it's pretty mind blowing the benefit and the upside of YouTube. So anyway, let's do a quick run through the videos. I have had a pretty good run here in September. It was a very good month. Uh, the video that I made last month about how much I make, 13,000 views. I made a video about quit your nine to five job now that came over really well. I, I was a little nervous that it would that would hit and it clearly has over 40,000 views. I made uh, a few videos that have gone uh, into the $50,000, excuse me, 50,000 range with views. Uber drivers and Kanye West, I've really enjoyed making these types of videos, these more broad videos that have the same theme, kind of the element of expose or the uh, kind of seeing something that others aren't seeing. Let me show you behind the curtain type of videos. They are better for the channel, I think, long term, as it's more broad, it can bring in a bigger audience. So for me, selfishly, I think those are uh, more enjoyable to make, not only that, but it, it helps the channel out. And then a couple other videos that have done well. Let's check out personal finance now. It's been a pretty rough month. I found out that my job is not returning. So this W-2 job income is gonna be zero for the rest of the year. I will be receiving a severance and we do have some stock options, so I'll be okay financially. But it's a weird time because I've never been self-employed in my life. I've always been an employee-minded person. I've always had that safety net there, and so to not have it is certainly new to me. It's certain emotions that I have to battle with now that I've never had to deal with. So I have been collecting unemployment. Thankfully, I've had a, this month I had a big sewer problem, a $31,000 sewer problem that I got hit with. The insurance does not cover, and so I'm on top of a expensive rehab that I'm already doing to this house, and then I get hit with a $31,000 sewage problem, and then I lose my job. And so it's been very challenging. And with these numbers, you can see I've, I've actually been collecting a lot less rent than I should have. I've had two empty rooms throughout this rehab process. Thankfully, uh, November, I'm setting up really well. I've got a full house booked for November at a really high rental rate. And so I'll start making the money back that I put into the house, which is gonna be reassuring. Um, but I did not make much money. This is six bedrooms I only brought in you know, whatever that comes out to be, $1,800 a month instead of roughly 3,500 or so. So there's a lot of money on the table that I have not been receiving, but the YouTube money keeps coming in, over 10,000, got some unemployment money to help keep me safe and secure. And, uh, and so I'm doing all right. Um, I've let some tenants pay late because just, I can't evict for non-payment of rent. And so I'm kind of stuck uh, in a tough spot. So I haven't been receiving rent that I should have been. And it's just not worth my time to go to small claims court. And so I'm kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. Had a lot of money spent on uh, house maintenance. Here are all my personal expenses right here. Thankfully, I have forbearance. My uh, The person who still owns this house, I was able to get forbearance. So I still have another six months. Starting October, five months left of forbearance. And so that's why the mortgage is so low. Uh, but my personal expenses are almost nothing right now as I try to get through this period of losing my job and all these expenses going towards the house. So let's check out the actual expenses. If you if you guys wonder what it's like to actually own a house, here's your uh, here's the expenses. Lost 15, almost $16,000 this month, although that's not quite as it seems. I spent almost 16,000 on the house that is uh, in the repairs, the maintenance, the renovations that I'm putting into it. I am making this house really nice. It was, uh, I'm buying it for 300, and I think it's probably gonna be worth at least 350. Probably in the next few years, it could be worth as high as 400, depending on the area and uh, what you get per square foot. But this is a big house. It's gonna be huge on the rental income, and it's worth every dollar that I'm putting into it. If you look over here on this side, you can see I'm putting a lot of money into this house, but I'm definitely getting it back. The ROI is still really big because the rental income is so great. 
Uh, but the expenses aren't too bad for this house. I paid the taxes for the year. This month I've already had insurance covered. And then uh, electric is, as we're finally leaving the summer, um, electric isn't too high. But anyway, tough month. Only earned 1800 from the income from the house. But the expenses are low, uh, not, counting the, uh, not counting the renovation. I'll show you down here all the, all the expenses. If, you, if you're wondering what it's like to renovate your house, and you go, look at all these Lowe's trips. I have a Lowe's next door. So I was going there like every single day. Uh, but these expenses add up almost 16 grand. That's a lot. <laughs> and thanks for, uh, thanks for my job, you know, losing my job. Thanks to the sewage for going out on me. Oh man, it's been a fun month. But anyway, I made a bunch of money from YouTube and so I'm thankful. Now we're going into uh, uh, the next month as self-employed YouTuber. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video.